previously on the Undercover Insurer. I think a general broker can target the market with a bit more of a broad breadth. Uh, as we specialise in the leisure industry, we have to focus more with, obviously within that market. It's my job to make sure that all the documentation is right, that we follow the procedures that are laid down by our regulator and to notice when we're not doing things right. And we lost something like 70 warning claims on our touring caravans in one night. You're giving someone a, a personal service, it's not sort of a big call centre. And the, the winner of a, an iPad is Sue. Three insurance professionals were given the mission to find out what brokers really thought of insurers. However, the brokers they spoke to were completely unaware that they were actually talking to personal line specialists from Zurich. Hello, my name is Jonathan Swift and I'd like to welcome you to the fourth episode of the Undercover Insurer brought to you in association with Zurich Insurance. Now for today's episode we move away from the premises of Autoline, Be Wiser and Coast into the Incisive Media Studios to catch up with our intrepid trio of Zurich Personal Lines professionals to talk to them about their experiences being the Undercover Insurer and also to put to them some of the questions that you the viewers have been asking through the Twitter feed. So welcome to the studio. Gareth McChesney, Trudy Archer and Ian McManus. Welcome all. So Gareth, I come to you first of all. What was the biggest thing you learnt doing the undercover insurer? Um, I think it's always interesting to get out and speak to brokers. They're the ones at the front line dealing with uh, customers and understand what the customer's needs are. I think probably one of the things um, I was most surprised about uh, was really the, with, when I went to auto line, was the degree of innovation that they're applying uh, with their telematics app particularly, um, around creating new solutions for um, problems they're finding their customers are having. So uh, I think that was probably uh, one of the things that I found particularly interesting. I've come to you, um, Ian. Well, um, uh, my role has a significant market-facing element, but for me it was quite often when I go and see brokers, I'm sort of talking to the MDs or the senior management, and it was really interesting getting back to the floor and talking to people about the, the real detail issues that impact them. But the one thing I really took away from my visit was the, the importance of the specialist expertise when you're operating in the schemes market, that you really understand uh, the customers that you're insuring. Uh, that came across loud and clear. And finally, Trudy. I think for me it was the focus on, on the customer and, and how much they think about how they can continually improve what they do for the customer and how we can play a part in that. Um, and it's very much you know, a continual journey for the, for, the, for the customer. So when they need to make improvements and they look to us to look at what changes we can do, I think also um, through my conversations with Mark, there is opportunities where we can share ideas and explore how we can make those improvements and make it more of a continuum as opposed to a broken customer experience. And, and Gareth, taking that on really, I mean we saw a variety of different businesses, different shapes and sizes and also um, different kind of lines of business they were working in. Did the overall sponsors to the old favourite of kind of price versus service surprise you at all? That was a question actually I was looking forward to exploring um, during the exercise um, because you know, being a pricing person you sort of think well it's always demands always on price um, but what I find was there was a very good balance between price and service it was recognized yes price needs to be there or thereabouts um, but um, the customers are actually looking for service they're actually looking for the service that a broker brings um, and almost got the impression we're maybe on the, the cusp of a bit of a sort of a, a consumer shift away from it purely being priced, from it purely being commoditized, um, to you know, actually, as long as it's pri prices there or thereabouts, there's a service element and the support that a broker brings that um, actually makes it important. So I find that very interesting. Ian, if I come to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's two elements to this because the insurer, the pricing is fundamentally driven by us 
uh, but the service comes in two parts. The, the, there's the part of the service that we deliver, and that's um, to the brokers in terms of administration and obviously it's customer at the point of claim. To a large degree, the, the, the point of claim from a customer point is a hygiene factor. They expect their claim to be handled in a, in a satisfactory manner. Um, expectations vary a bit, but that, that's just the basic of, of what we do. The interaction between us and the broker is really important, and that came across again from uh, when I was at Coast and, and watching the, uh, the videos and talking to the guys from their visits, that the interaction with the insurer and the service around referrals and um, you know, uh, any particular issues they've got with individual cases, you know, how that works. But Gareth's absolutely right. What we are seeing, and there's a number of brokers we're seeing now where their focus on service delivery to the, cust to the customer is attracting back customers who perhaps had gone and bought solely on price. And that's really good to see because I think, personally, I, you know, my policies are both through a broker, you know, always have been. Um, I value the extra service they bring, even as an insurance professional, I know, I know what I'm doing with the actual policies, but actually it's really good to have somebody there to sort things out for you and, and help you out when there are slightly unusual requirements, so it's, yeah, it's really good to see. So your customers, are, are they solely price focused or do they, is, do they value the, the service that Coast brings to the party? Is I think, as I said before, they, they, um, they are quite um, into the, the small family company more than uh, price sometimes at new business is generally from people who have been recommended by existing customers who, who, who want to come to us because they've had such a good service so the service is it's, it's service and, and price a combination of both I would say I can't say that one is better than the other. Trudy if I can come to you um, from, from your visit what kind of sense do you get about the relationships between insurers and brokers are they in a good position at the moment a bad position is it an intermediate position? I think, I think it's getting stronger and I think the reason for that is, and it relates to what Ian has just said, is that there is a focus not just on price but on customer service. I think, you know, we know our customers are more demanding uh, and um, so they demand more from the broker and they're continually looking at ways in which they can improve that. So therefore, you know, they need good conversations with us because we can support those improvements. So it's about listening to their ideas and looking at how we can make it easier for them to do business for their customer. Um, so I think th those, those insurance companies that demonstrate that they are willing to listen, make us uh, easy to, to, to access, make the referral process easier, uh, I think that's where the relationships will strengthen. Ian? Yeah, I mean, I think at, at the end of the day, um, we're all in it together. You know, if we're going to make a success in the channel, um, uh, the broker channel to Zurich is a very significant proportion of our business in personal lines in the UK. Um, it's a, a market that we've invested very heavily in over the last couple of years in terms of um, eliminating you know, as much of the cost in our business as possible to make it more competitive. We've re-engineered our processes to give an improved service, better, a better transactional relationship. Um, and I think the, the, the tone I get when I, when I speak to brokers, again, I think, you know, I, I was out of the broker market for a few years, I came back in a couple of years ago, um, and it is very much one of working together. So I think predominantly it's right. It's not right everywhere with, you know, it's not us with all our brokers and it's not every insurer with all their brokers either, but I think there's a, there's a reason much more collaborative approach than I think probably we saw years ago. So Gareth, during the, um, the, the, the Q&As with the, the brokers on the front line, the issues of application fraud, customer checks, and also perhaps accommodating uh, non-standard risk came up quite a few times. Yeah. W what is Zurich doing as an insurer to perhaps improve the processes here? Well, I think if we deal with the application fraud piece, that's relatively new to the broker market. I think you know, a lot of insurers have uh, piloted the processes in the in the in the direct environment um, uh, before rolling them out to the to the broker world, and they don't quite fit as nicely in the broker world. There's a lot of different pro you know, different changes that are needed, um, but equally there's also also the uh, the bit around the brokers are already doing some element of validation, so we need to take that into account as well. Um, so uh, I think the processes are new. They will go through teething problems. Um, we need to get that feedback from, from brokers and we need to understand um, where, the, where it's a bit clunky, uh, where it's uh, upsetting the, the policyholder unduly. Um, but equally, I think there's probably a role for insurers to play 
in evidencing the need for some of these things. So, you know, will the controls that are put in place ultimately lead to more competitive premiums, more accurate premiums for the honest policyholder? Yes, it will. So there's that benefit. Um, but equally, where a broker maybe believes they understand the uh, their customer, there are occasions whenever you know through the validation which is which is done, you do it to still identify some problems. So it's it's back to your previous question. It's about communication. It's about keeping open dialogue, and uh, refining the process based upon that feedback. You know, we were getting letters from one of the insurers, and it just was a basic standard letter. And if you have a client with you for mm. years and they're asking for a V5 or they're asking for a utility bill or copy license, it's hard to explain to them why. Yeah. Whereas I've spoken to, it was actually Zurich was one of the insurers, and I've spoken to their rep and said, listen, if we can get a wee bit of background, yeah. why you're asking for it, it makes it easier. Yeah. Ian? Well, yeah, I think the, um, the, there is clearly a need. Uh, we see that by the number of uh, fails we get on the validation process. So we know that a proportion, yeah, around 12%, won't actually go through first time. So it's whether there are inconsistencies in data which we've identified. Um, there is a real need for us as an industry to get the quality of the data we hold on our customers to a much higher standard. Um, you know, as an industry, we rely absolutely on the information we receive, both as brokers and insurers. If the data is wrong on the way in, then the assumptions that we will make will be incorrect and that will lead us potentially to the wrong decision. So it's absolutely vital um, on, a, on a portfolio level, but actually on an individual customer level, it's also really important because um, small pieces of information can make a big difference. And that can be to the customer's advantage as much to their detriment. So it's really critical to get it right. Um, but on the, the validation fails we're seeing as an example, 25% um, of all of them are because the date of birth of the policyholder is incorrect. Now, customers may forget about a claim, they might not know the date, and that's understandable, we're, we're, we're quite tolerant to that. Um, and I'm certainly not saying that insurers are perfect about communicating their data to their brokers, and I, so we hold our hands up that where we've got flaws, we're trying to improve our communication, but customers predominantly know their date of birth. And I'm not saying people are doing it deliberately wrong, but it, that care in keying the data is absolutely vital. Um, and we have obligations in law in terms of data quality as well, so it's not just about us wanting the data right to get the rates correct. We, we, sh you know, we have a legal obligation to hold the correct data. So I think it's incumbent on all of us to get that position improved. Um, so I'm very supportive of the data validation. Gareth's right. You know, we, uh, it was a new process transporting it out of the direct world into brokers. We did engage our brokers. We did talk to a group of brokers about how we thought it would work. Um, we had it sort of uh, a general thumbs up, but in practice it's a bit different when you go live and you actually transact day to day. So um, my team, you know, in, in the sort of segment have been getting the feedback and we're working very closely with Orlando Reynolds and Gareth's team to actually improve the process and eliminate any areas where we can't, genuinely can't see benefit. Um, because a, a, as a principle there is benefit, but there might be little pieces of that that we, we can just make everybody's lives a little bit easier. So we are working hard to do that. How would you describe the appetite for learning amongst the people that you spoke to? I came across very strongly. Um, you know, they, they were focused on... I, th I suppose probably one, another one of the areas that perhaps surprised me somewhat was the focus upon uh, Chartered Insurance Institute qualifications, professional qualifications. Um, you know, at that fr front, front line uh, within a broker's office, sort of thing, is that getting a bit lost now? Is it a bit old hat? But you no, know, there was the focus on becoming professionally qualified and recognise the benefits of those professional qualifications. And you know, there, there, there was a hunger there for people to create a career rather than just have a job. And Trudy, for you at BeWiser? Yeah, very much the same. Uh, they, I mean, they've got a fabulous graduate scheme, um, and the people I spoke to. Um, you know, they were very proud of how they were progressing through through the training. Um, again, uh, a big um, focus on the qualifications, professional qualifications. But in addition to that, um, the Max in particular I was talking to, um, they have some strong leadership training. So he he'd done team leader training, for example, as well as customer service. So I think what was so impressive was they got the balance right between the customer, the people, and the technical requirements. And I think you know as we've talked about the customer being, you know, a, a strong focus. I think that they've they've really got it right in terms of their training.
he'll give us like a workbook, things to do. Um, the last couple of hours I've been in a self-study session as uh, so they give us time in the company day to be able to sort of go out, finish off your workbooks, do some extra research, things like that. And then, yeah, the rest of it is I'm currently an acting team leader in customer services. Um, so looking after the team, making sure they're all good and yeah, getting the work done. Ian, finally, you at Coast. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it was great to hear. I mean, uh, so particularly talking to Sam, you know, he's very keen to get started on his exams. That's a very important part of, as, as Gareth said, people joining the insurance industry for a career rather than just a job. Um, and I think what was really, what um, I found particularly reassuring was that everyone we went to see, whether it was mandated or it was just supported on a voluntary basis, the support was absolutely there for people in a professional qualification. And what did you enjoy most about the experience, truly? I think uh, it, it, was a, it was observing people who were genuinely, um, you know, proud to do their job, service the customer, um, but also a desire to, to grow their own knowledge in, in the industry that they're in. And when you sit back and observe that, and it was consistent, you know, it was a consistent thread throughout everyone I spoke to, when I sat back and was watching people, you know, just in their day-to-day -day role, it, it, was, it, was, it was a joy to observe. And Ian, what did you enjoy most about your uh, undercover insurer experience? Well, I, uh, it, was, it was really nice to talk to people about the, the reality of what we do. Uh, as I say, although I'm, I'm out there quite a bit, it, it, you, you do, I think it, we're always in danger of being a bit detached from the end customer um, and the frontline staff. And it was just really nice to talk to guys on the front line. They clearly, you know, they didn't, they didn't know who we were, so they were perhaps a little bit more open than they might be if, if I turn up at Coast where we've got a very important relationship and, you know, they're probably going to say nice things and it's nice to get a bit of honesty back. But yeah, I just really enjoy talking about the day-to-day the -day job that they have to do. It gets, makes you feel a bit more honest and back in touch with the, the customers. Finally, Gareth. It's, it's good to get out and, under, and understand the marketplace because it evolves all the time, it's changing all the time, and uh, just to keep up to date with what's going on within the market, what's going on with the, um, the, the challenges that current reading levels are bringing, the challenges that fraud is bringing, and um, just understand what's going on. Well, I suppose now uh, the big question is, you've all been out there, you've all filmed the undercover insurer, Will you now spend more time listening to the brokers on the front line? Gareth. The experience reaffirmed the importance of listening to brokers, reaffirmed the importance of uh, being out there and uh, speaking to people in the market. The one thing I think that I will do perhaps differently is when I go into a broker's office, spend more time talking to the staff at the front line. Uh, they understand what's going on, they understand what the challenges are, and uh, getting that feedback will be important. Uh, Trudy? Yeah, I, it definitely. I think there is so much that we can share and learn from each other from a customer point of view um, and, and enable the broker to, to grow their customer base and in, in, in which case enable us to grow ours. So absolutely, I think there's a lot that we can, we can learn from each other. And finally, Ian. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up on Gareth's point. I think the important thing for me is when I'm uh, out my visits to brokers, rather than waiting for the MD, actually spend a bit of time at the front desk and have a chat with the guys actually doing the work. Um, see what they're thinking and saying. Uh, that, as you say, uh, it's sort of the unabridged version is probably more useful to us than the the, the slightly sugar-coated one that we sometimes get. So, and finally, I mean, what are Zurich's plans for brokers in, into 2014 and, and perhaps beyond? Oh, well, beyond. Yeah. Well, I think um, as I say, for us, we've been on a journey for a couple of years now. You know, we've um, worked hard to eliminate the costs at our end. Uh, we've moved on to a new platform from uh, from an e-trading point of view. Um, that works pretty much complete now. Um, so we're now into a number of things really. I mean, a, uh, we've delivered the capability. We now need to optimise it to give the best rates available to brokers. Uh, so we're working very hard on that at the moment. Um, we are looking to develop new niche opportunities. And one of the things that you know, we're talking to somebody like Coast. You know, there's a degree of expertise in the market that doesn't naturally exist everywhere. So we are very keen to talk to people like Coast and work on those sort of opportunities as well. You know, we've had some good success in 2013 with uh, arrangements like the Civil Service Insurance Society. Um, and I think that, that this, those are the two angles really optimise what we've got to give people a really good transactional experience um, so that we've got competitive rates out there that they can use and where bigger opportunities exist, whatever they may be, um, we're, in, you know, we're in a place now where we're We've cleared the path, we've done all the heavy lifting, and we can now focus on those more bespoke opportunities. Excellent. 
Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. I'd like to thank you all, uh, Gareth, Trudy and Ian. I'd also like to remind you all uh, to tune in next week for the fifth and final episode of The Undercover Insurer. In this episode, uh, Gareth, Trudy and Ian will be getting together to decide who should be the overall winner of The Undercover Insurer. Now remember, we have three people in the running for this. From our auto line, we have Denise. From Be Wiser, we have Max. And finally, from Coast, we have Sue. So they're all in the running, and we'll find out next week who is the final winner of the Undercover Insurer. Until then, it's goodbye from me.